was Hey everybody! Welcome back happy. to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I'm ready. It's an Isaac run. I would say that we're in the we're in the middle period of the well, I mean we're only 20% of the way from 90 to 100. But we're kind of in the middle period, YFP0, C2, LV is our seed, of of making that happen. Because the Isaac run, it's not a foregone conclusion, but the odds are pretty darn decent. Oh, I was a little close there. The odds are pretty darn decent. You end up getting to, to 93 wins here, then you have that Eden run, 94, and you're pretty much halfway there. I mean, that's maybe an optimistic way to think about it, but... We'll reroll Loki's horns into HP, and I think that's definitely a worthwhile trade for us. Um, that's the way I used to, you know, live my life when I was uh, teaching in South Korea. I'd be like, you know, okay, well, I've got like one class... Let's say that, like, I have seven classes to teach in a given day. Oh, jeez, yeah, I'm gonna get hit there. Um, if I got seven classes to teach in a day, you teach the first class and you're like, alright, well, I'm highly motivated because I just got started. Then you teach the second class and you're like, well, all I gotta do is do the third and the fourth class and then it's lunch and then the, the day's basically over. You go through a little bit of mental gymnastics and it, it helps out with the morale a little bit, you know? You used to work at an office, I'd be like, well, it's 11 a.m., so it's only an hour till lunch. And then, I'm going to do a little bit more exploration first. I might want to fight the boss first, just while we have a lot of HP. Just in case it was truly terrible, which it wasn't, but that's okay. Like, okay, it's 11 a.m. I work uh, 8.30 to 3.30. Or 8.30 to 4, I can't remember. But anyway. You're like, okay, it's an hour to lunch. I've already worked two and a half hours. It's an hour to lunch. So lunch is a half hour. Then I come back. Then I just, you know, the afternoon is like, it's pretty easy because people are coming back from lunch at like slightly different times. You're not really, there's not going to be bogged down with meetings or anything like that. By the time you get into meetings again, it's going to be like three and then you're pretty much good to go, you know. Then you've only got like another hour and that's pretty much just preparing for the next day. It's starting to sound a little bit like, like Peter from Office Space. It's just, you do like... 15 minutes of actual work and then you zone out for hours. That's not the case. It's just, you know, you got to divide up your time effectively. And you can do that for yourself as well. Like, what if you're, like, you really hate school right now and you're, like, 15. Let's say you're 15 with a late birthday so that you, uh, you graduate high school at 17. Well, you've already done, like, 12 years of school. You've only got two years left. That's, like, nothing. That's basically, like, you've already done it. All you need to do is ride it out. All you gotta do is turn your brain off for a couple years and, uh, you know, keep your head down. Keep working hard, but just stop thinking about, uh, the, the destination right now and you'll be through it before you even realize. You know, it's, like, the hardest part of, uh, any project is the end of it. You know, when it first gets started, everyone's excited. Everyone's, oh, this is gonna be an amazing project. It's gonna change the world. And then, you know, you do the easy part. You get into the final, like, 15, 20%, people are like, Oh, I hate this, this is a piece of shit. You gotta watch out for that, you know, you gotta just work through it. I'm not necessarily a great example of that. I'm just, I'm trying to get you to be better than I am. Hmm, interesting situation here. I have learned a lesson from our last run, and I think it's smarter for me to come in here, blow up our donation machine. My hope is that we get enough to buy the key as well. And we do, but we could also get an arcade if we just go down to the next floor, but I think the key is probably more valuable. So we'll take this, and I wanted to make sure, I mean, we could open that too, but I wanted to make sure that we had um, a Spirit Heart, because on our last run, or maybe it was two runs ago, but I think it was our last run, I didn't have uh, a key at this point. Not a key, sorry, I didn't have a Spirit Heart. And then I got hit on the next floor, I know there's a Tinted Rock back there, but we needed two bombs to get it. A little cost prohibitive when, for one bomb, we could get a key and a Spirit Heart anyway. All right, so I want to. I'm trying to learn from my past mistake that kept me from getting an early deal with the devil and put me in a little bit of a tricky situation with that um, that last run we had. We also picked up another bomb right off the bat. That's okay. Hopefully you explode into bombs and then the enemies stay close enough to you. And of course they don't because that would be you know ridiculously bad for their self-preservation uh, instinct. But we'll try. Not a secret room. Would have been an awesome secret room considering, but we can live with it. Now, probably the best play here is to wait on blowing up this tinted rock. Or, sorry, not tinted rock at all, but blowing up this rock formation. And then get something, uh, prioritize, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Make sure that you can also get a uh, tinted rock if one shows up because we only had one bomb. We didn't get a bomb out of it. We did get one chest. Yeah, we can open that now. The chest contained a key. Um, I think we did end up winning a little bit, but we are out of bombs. Although, now we have Ipecac. So that problem is largely completely solved. Okay, let's keep moving on. The Ipecac pickup 
I'll be the first to tell you, uh, especially with that, I'll be the first to tell you that an Ipecac pickup is, is pretty much a guaranteed win. It's not 100% guaranteed, which makes me a hypocrite because that's literally what the definition definition of guaranteed means. Okay, don't lose your spirit heart. Don't look back in anger, I heard him say. But for real, this should be, uh, I'm not going to say fully an easy run yet because to some extent it depends, but... Considering that we got so much HP in the early game as well, I think this is an awesome situation for us that we really um, should not be bent out of shape by. If you're scared of Ipecac, I f honestly feel bad for you. I'm not even going to say Sun and quote Jay-Z at the end of it because you're missing out on one of the easiest items, I think, to, to ball out of control within the entire game. And it's actually quite a fun one as well, if I, if I do say so myself. High Priestess is fine. Try these. Amnesia uh, is largely irrelevant, I think. Not in the video game industry where it is a, a juggernaut, but uh, for us right now, largely irrelevant. And we pick up Guppy's Tail for free, which is awesome. Guppy Ipecac is a great combination. We have some rerolls that we can use. For now, we just gotta worry about killing Larry Jr. I'm just gonna use this, probably kill one, and then one more Ipecac shot might kill the other one. And we got our Eternal Heart. A damage plus range upgrade is absolutely fine. And Judas' Shadow is also perfectly okay. This will um, alternatively give us the win or annoy the crap out of me, but uh, I think this is good. And what we'll do is go back to our shop. It's a shame we picked up so many spirit hearts recently, but it's okay. We'll go to our shop here, and there is a spirit heart. There's Humbling Bundle as well, but I don't really want to go that far on our donation machine. Uh, but I did accidentally anyway, pretty much. I only wanted uh, five cents, but for some reason I just kept blowing it up, and now we're at, uh, we're gonna get to 20. I, I figured, oh, you know what, we might as well buy, yes, this is correct. Okay, so we'll kill ourselves in the fire, and then we'll come back, we'll buy Humbling Bundle, and then we'll get a little bit more money back as a result. So this is gonna give us a huge damage bonus, we did get Judas the Shadow. Yes. Might seem like I'm being overly cautious about that, but you only need to fuck it up once for it to be truly catastrophic. Then we leave and come back, and this money becomes more money. And then we buy this. And just to be on the safe side, I have taken 25 cents, maybe even a little bit more, out of our donation machine. So I figured, let's just, uh, let's be nice about it. Give a little bit of money back to our donation machine. And give a little bit of your fiscal power to me. Give a little bit. And give a little bit of your country's preferred currency to me. You all know, you didn't remember that, did he? From the mid 80s. Um, okay. We should open that golden chest. I mean, Humbling Bundle, the idea behind it is that it really sorts out our consumable game. That was not a good example of sorting out our consumable game, but that's okay. Thank you for at least not being Bad Trip. Bad Trip has the potential to be a little dangerous for us right here. Let's see if we can land a better shot in here. Um, okay, I'll tell you what, we can do this. This might slow us down to the point where we can't do boss rush, but I don't really mind... Thank you for not being Bob's brain. I don't really mind that that much, honestly. Fuck the secret room here, it's not relevant. Infamy is a good pickup. Kinda wish that we still had some HP left so we could play the Blood Bank, but... It's, uh, not an enormous deal, maybe. Cursed Eye, extremely dangerous. Alright, it's gonna be a fun one. <laughs> Previously, people might have been like, oh, this is looking way too easy. I don't know if that's the case anymore. You may still believe so, but we'll find out uh, sooner or later if this is true. You can always tap shoot, but um, the, the benefit of Cursed Eye, of course, is that every single enemy will die in one hit. Uh, well, almost every enemy will probably die in one hit. I'm going to donate more money to our donation machine. Again, none of these uh, shop items, I would expect them to make an enormous difference in the quality of our run at this point. So I want to keep donating to our donation machine, even though it's a little boring. Just to maximize our chances of, uh, of not fucking over our donation machine forever. I want to see if maybe... No, that won't be our secret room, so that's okay. We have Curse of the Blind, so, uh, admittedly, even though we did just, uh, earn ourselves probably a much better chance at a deal with the devil by blowing up that judgment, we may not want to go through with that chance, depending on what, uh, our HP situation looks like. And that does help. And we're pretty much good to go on this floor. Uh, we've we've certainly made things interesting. Oh, I guess Pestilence isn't going to die in one hit. Fair enough. 
We didn't get a deal with the devil, which might be for the best. I guess, uh... I guess we should explore a little bit more. But I do worry that I'm gonna hurt myself more than I'm gonna help myself, but it's probably still worth it. Definitely do not want to play that. Uh, we will be on the lookout for a secret room. It seemed like that was pretty likely to be the case. Bomb our way out of the bottom here. Amnesia? It's a pretty terrible pill. I don't know if it ever gets any better. What does Amnesia be? Oh, probably becomes I Can See Forever, right? Uh, we have Humbling Bundle, so I'll do it. And that ended up being a pretty okay decision, so I'm happy with it. I don't really care if we're out of here by 10 minutes. If we do boss rush, we don't do boss rush. It doesn't really matter. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit cool on the idea of boss rush. And I don't mean cool in the way the, the, the kids are talking about things being cool these days with their rock and roll music. But rather, um, you know, not warm. I'm not feeling super confident that it's a, a great decision for me, considering we've had a lot of opportunities that uh, uh, to do boss rush that almost screwed us over recently. But debatable, for sure. Curse room ended up being pretty shitty. Uh, it's a really bad time to get a golden key, but I guess it's the thought that counts. I appreciate it nonetheless. We got five more cents. I'm not really going to... Oh, we have one more uh, room to do. I'm probably not going to do too much more with five more cents. Might want to donate it to our donation machine if we get uh, a lot more money. Broken Ankh is interesting, but of course my... Whoa, this is not good. My dream with Broken Ankh is that we never have to use it. So rusted key should be a lot better. More keys plus humbling bundle. Plus more chests, which we have Guppy's tail for, so we'd be expecting some pretty okay ones. Oh my god. Okay, we still have HP, lots of HP actually, for the next floor. 15 cents, Broken Onk. You know what, fuck it. I'm gonna take Broken Onk. It's a just-in-case sort of deal. We are gonna have a Red Heart ready for the next floor, but I wanna be a little careful, you know? A little cautious. Why don't we blow this up? That was a, quite a lot of money that came as a result of that. And I think we will buy something in our shop now because we can afford to, so... Um, let's buy this one. PhD, that's fantastic. We get I Can See Forever. Bombs are key. I'll use it because we have Ipecac, so it seems like a great choice. And we'll just head down to our next floor with enough money to spawn uh, a donation machine. Or, sorry, an arcade. Which could have a donation machine, adm admittedly. But I'm still 100% wrong. Okay, don't die on this floor. That would be very bad. Again, there's a lot of items for which I've gone to bat. Okay. Cursed Eye is one of them. If we end up dying because of Cursed Eye, I'll feel like an idiot, but at the same time, I didn't deliberately pick up Cursed Eye, so it's not going to bother me all that much. I'll take it. I think uh, I think the shot speed and the, the extra speed contributes to maneuverability, and the maneuverability is going to give me a much better chance to not get hit. By my own bombs, at least. Which is pretty much how the brunt of the damage is coming right now. You can't tell me you're going to give me zero pills. Zero pills out of, like, ten of those freaking things there? That doesn't seem right, especially with PhD. I'm calling uh, a little bit of a conspiracy here. We don't have Curse of the Blind on this floor, right? No. So, this would be potentially an awesome floor on... We gotta really cool it, actually. This is looking dangerous. Oh, okay. Tell you what, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Let's get a move on. This room is immediately frightening. But, the enemies are staying far away. Lots of potential pills. PhD. Magic mush. That ain't Falco. Oh, 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 you know. I can't really muster the enthusiasm to keep that up for the entire video, so I'm just gonna cool it for now. Let's not fight greed in case it's greed. Health up is amazing. Speed up is also very useful. And we'll buy this, and we'll buy this, and we will try to get enough money to buy the map as well. And all of a sudden, we're looking like not in nightmare zone for HP anymore. You know what? Thank you, Infamy. You tried. I, I fudged that up a little bit. I appreciate your help. So we know we're going to be fighting Carrion Queen. That's not the end of the world. But it's it's annoying, of course. Come on. One more health upgrade. Two bombs are key. One speed up. And the speed up's still good as far as I'm concerned. No, you dick! <laughs> oh, he took my black card too. 
Okay. This is actually starting to scare me quite a lot. So we're going to blow up every single mushroom. Every single health upgrade is meaningful for us right now. If you just want to give me, like, red hearts, that's fine too. Just some peace of mind in the form of red hearts would, would mean a lot. We do still have our deal with the devil precedent here. All I gotta say right now is, like, Jesus Christ. Maybe we'll just hold this for now. Thank you. F oh, that's real good. But thank you for the, um... The HP upgrade and the eternal heart that we got. Without which, we might have found ourselves in a very, very scary position. Okay, that's good. I, I appreciate the keys. We can play the blood bank without uh, ruining our deal with the devil chances. We got there's something to be said for this boss trap room. I'm not sure what it is to be said about it, but there is something to be said about it. I think it's in our best interest to go fight the boss. I'm going to take this other speed up because it's carrying Queen, and that's how we got hit last time. Okay, we're doing a little poison damage. There we go. It's all about landing that shot on the back. We can do a little damage against the hearts from time to time. Nine lives, man. This is, like, seal the deal for us. Give us nine lives. Okay, another speed upgrade is a little ridiculous. Bombs. We're just going to get out of the way of those. Pills, one of which is bombs are key. The other one is 48-hour energy and some flies. So I think reroll this. Uh, yes, I will try this. I think we can get more than we uh, asked for here. Hematomesis, explosive diarrhea, I can see forever. That's very disappointing. Um, Hematomesis, on the other hand, gives us a pretty good chance to play the crap out of this blood bank. And actually, I think what I'll do with it... It's quite risky. I'm gonna do that. Then we're gonna walk in here. We're gonna use Hematomesis. We're gonna get back to full HP, then we're gonna fight our bosses. And we have enough HP on the ground that I'm like, if I get hit, just, just run to a red heart. Like, get to an adult's house. Tell them what's happening and, and you'll be safe, you know? That's what I'm afraid of right now. But we should be fine. And with all this HP, you gotta be thinking IV bag at least. I don't want the IV bag. But, um, you know, presumably what I'm getting at is that we're gonna get some kind of payout. We have to. It's unfathomable that we don't. Also, we are going to get a ton of money here. So let's just be very smart and not accidentally kill ourselves on the donation machine. That would be very, very bad for business. Speaking of which, I don't know if there's like spikes or, you know, live bombs or something. So we're just going to come back and grab that one right away. We're going to be very shrewd here. We're not going to be dummies. Last play. Then we leave. We go get uh, the heart. We'll play it one more time. We gotta really... I didn't expect to have to use our due diligence like this. But we really, really do. This is a scary situation, man. We still only got one guppy item. Our deal with the devil sucked. We are... We're making unbelievable money here. I'll be the first to tell you that. We've only got two HP... 2 HP. We got a hematomesis pill and a 48 hour energy pill. The hematomesis pill is actually like the poor man's uh, full health. Not full health, really, but um, the poor man's lovers. That If that had gotten me killed, I would have never forgiven myself. Hematomesis. Hematomesis is so important. We did use I Can See Forever on this floor, so where the heck is our second secret room? Um, it's, it's so important because if we get hit twice, we can just pop it and be like, oh, actually, we're fine. You know, there's, there's hearts for us on the ground and we gained a little bit of HP. Shop's back over here. We definitely want to, you know, take advantage of that. <laughs> How do you like that? Um, okay, I am actually in full-blown kind of like panic mode right now. Explosive diarrhea does not help. 
We need to chill the fuck out. I'm in a great position. I'm doing so much damage. We've already been to our second secret room. Why am I freaking out so hard? We're going to stop freaking out. We're going to buy this. It's good-ish. We're going to buy this. We're going to get a card. The card is the Emperor. That's pretty solid. We're also going to re-roll the deck of cards into the battery, which is also pretty good. Then we're going to donate as much money as we can to our donation machine. Okay. Alright, we need to take a like a sincerely deep breath here. Because my intention is that we do go... How much HP? Tons of HP. My intention is that we do go to our curse room here. And this was the room that started us off on this negativity here. Just one of these paying out with an HP upgrade. I can see forever is really good, admittedly. 48 hour energy is also good. And that just teleported us to our deal with the devil where there was a bombs or key pill. Okay, well, um, we're out then. Could play our blood bank some more. I'm actually very tempted to play our blood bank some more. But I think instead we're going to take our 48 hour energy pill and get the hell out of here. We could take the Emperor instead. I'm scared. Like, I'm actually scared about this run right now. Um, what was this? This was Catacombs. Hopefully we end up on the depths on the next floor. Just get rid of this shit. I can see forever. Explosive diarrhea. 40 I think 48 hour energy is going to be better. We might as well go down with two full charges, I guess. And then, here we go. It is the Depths XL. That is not necessarily... The kiss of death or anything equally uh, dangerous. What's the most important thing? Just stay cool. Depths XL is not necessary. It doesn't have to be a major problem. Let's put it that way. We got skulls that we can crack. These skulls have a good chance to give us spirit hearts. I am not only am I worried about surviving. That's obviously like that's up there, but I'm worried about um, keeping us in a position where we can also win. Now we have that damage, of course. We need more HP and survivability, but that's what I'm looking at, uh, like, I'm, I'm trying not to take damage before a deal with the devil, because I really need, uh, I really need, I, I feel like I need at least the, the deal with the devil chance to really guarantee myself good chances. I feel good about that room. Come on, just one lucky spirit heart, and there it is, and actually a golden key on this floor. Could be worth quite a lot. All right, see you later. We got to be careful because these guys could fairly easily... Just got to take our shot. These guys could fairly easily teleport us um, into the boss room and then we'd miss out on a ton of this floor. This is fine. Um, I would rather use a bomb just for no risk to hit myself. One spirit heart is more gracious than you had to be. I got to admit, Maggie's faith is somewhat tempting. But we're a little late, and the Onk is... It's <laughs> the broken Onk, I should say. It's kind of looked like it was going to be really, really useful for uh, the, uh, the occasional circumstance here, so... I'm skeptical that I, that I want to get rid of it. The good news is we don't have to choose until, until later. Well, we got a golden key, so... I don't know how the heck I'm going to blow this up, but we got a golden key. What are, yeah, let's try it from this side. There we go. Money equals power. How about money equals HP? That item doesn't exist, but I wish it did. I do think we should be fine. Red chests. Ooh, no. I do think we should be fine on this floor. It's just a... Admittedly, like, quite a large crapshoot. We do so much damage, though. It would be an unbelievable shame for this run to, to fail. Also, where the heck are all of my... Uh, all my special rooms. We've gotten to like six dead ends so far, and now I look and I'm like, oh shit, they're like ten rooms away. Okay, we'll do it your way, game. If you want to be a dick like that, we will be dicks like that. But just don't expect anything but exactly the same treatment in kind. And I will say, like, this is not like the game has been uh, unfair to us. I think the game has been very fair to us. Especially with respect to damage. We've got, like, a ridiculous amount of damage. That's got to be our boss fight. Um, we've got a ridiculous amount of damage, and I'm very, very appreciative of this fact. 
just a little bit, little bit low on the, the whole HP thing. A lot of which is my own fault, admittedly. Would it kill you, though, to, like, give me a black heart, maybe? We will definitely check this. The hero... F there we go. Okay, so now I'm starting to feel pretty good. But we fully recognize how quickly the dream can turn into a nightmare. Good. Very, very good. Alright, we're gonna blow up all the skulls, because... Even though they're behind spikes, we can still get what their reward is. Just with Ipecac, mostly, I guess. Chaos card. I actually think 48 hour energy is a lot better than chaos, but I will admit that this is a little bit closer to, oh, so good, a little bit closer to chaos being amazing because there's a chance we might find ourselves like needing to kill an enemy without getting hit. I like it. Almost dead. Straight up like one hit away from dying, although one hit is like 40% HP at this point. No greed fight, I love it. Starter deck, sorry 48 hour energy, I'm an idiot. Um, high Priestess, High Priestess. Because at this point, we might as well take a Chaos card. Uh, let's donate a, a... Oh, it's already full. Okay. Good, good. We can go back for that Chaos card. It does beat High Priestess. The Relic pickup is extraordinary. I'm a huge fan. Where the heck... Item room number two must be on the other side of the map. Okay. Don't let it put you in a false sense of security here. Extremely important... That we uh, do our due diligence here. If there's any ooh, special rocks, if there's any, uh, you know, demon hearts in skulls, we gotta find them. I probably should not have taken starter deck. Uh, I think I'm. Yeah, we're gonna take the chaos card. I think that this run, above all else, illustrates how lucky I was to um, to beat the lost with Ipecac and Shielded Tears, man. And you know what I mean by beat the Lost, you know, like... The Lost was not the final boss, but in several ways it kind of was, wasn't it? Chaos card. So, our, uh... Yeah, it's making me feel like I, at one point, was, uh... On the top of my game. I only had to be there for one game. That's true. But, um, it's pretty amazing. At first I was like, why is everyone acting like they're impressed by this. Ipecac is such a good item. And then now I'm like, oh right, because it's like really hard. I'm not trying to toot my own horn at all here. Rather, I'm just like, I <laughs> I get it now. Okay, I am going to play you. Usually on play six, you give, oh, all right, nothing on play six. Okay. What are we hoping for here? Well, quite selfishly, it would be amazing if we could get... Pyro. Pyromaniac, of course. There's one left. Ooh. Like, healing ourselves with bombs would be extraordinary. Scissors is bad. Harlequin Baby is not good enough, I'd say. Reroll it again. Holy Water is substantially terrible. That's alright. We got some... We got some time. If we want it. We did not pop an I can see forever, but we'll peel down here. That's okay, it's not that bad. Let's go get some HP. Not HP, charges. HP, yes, though, as well, because we want to get um, this demon judgment to pay out. Just don't start throwing like an idiot, because that's um, probably not conducive to your success. So we'll come back here, we'll get... Uh, the double red hearts. We'll play Demon Judgment, and I think we'll... Oh, we have the battery, so we should actually go to our shop. And on our shop, I'll buy another battery charge. I'll reroll Harlequin Baby. Well, it's now Holy Water. I'll reroll Holy Water once. Oh, there's another charge back here as well. But we gotta cut it at some point in favor of keeping our momentum. I feel. So, we're going to... There's no battery. That is... What is this card? Why did I not take this? Two of Clubs? How did that not appear earlier in my mind share? Anyway, we're gonna come back here, grab the battery, which is here. We're gonna reroll, we're gonna play the Demon Judgment, then we're gonna reroll the crap out of Holy Water. If it sucks after one reroll, we'll probably just take it if it's a passive and then leave. Because I wanna make sure that I can reroll a deal with the devil if we earn one. We'll see. Pulse Worm is interesting. K 
Can't help but feel that maybe Broken Onk a little more solid right now. Nah. Sorry. Uh, so let's re-roll it again. I'm pretty extremely disappointed with the way that this has worked out. Who do I want to use Chaos Card against? Probably I want to use Chaos Card against Mom, actually. Yeah, yeah, I could see that working. Just want to check maybe for a, a second secret room. This gives us the ability to use Chaos Card. Well, there's no second secret room there. To use Chaos Card quickly and then get that space in our inventory back for something else. And it gives us the opportunity to kill Mom without taking damage. We'll be at the amount of HP required for permanent Polaroid invincibility. So let's get rid of these. And get ready. No deal with the devil. So I guess my rerolls were, were actually fairly correct. But this is going to be an interesting one as we head down here. We got a lot of HP, a decent way to replenish it. But certainly this has been a bit of a, a trial. That's what I get for always saying it's going to be, oh, you know, it's, uh, the eyes of Grun. It's pretty much a foregone conclusion. To be fair, a lot of the problems on this run are 100% as a result of Cursed Eye, which I will say I'm not using very effectively. I'm not going to go out on a limb and say it's a bad item. I think it's a bad item if you're not expecting to get it. You know, if you don't make the choice yourself, you're not really, uh, you don't feel as beholden to it, maybe. I don't know, I'm coming up with excuses for it now, which is not necessary. I wish we didn't have it, we'd be in a better position, but our damage is is so good that it's impossible for me to get salty over it. Okay, hopefully we get super lucky and our secret room is uh, adjacent to this cursed room. It's very plausible. I hate, the white enemies might be my least favorite champions as a, a, a bleh, of all. Nah, that's not gonna be our secret room. Because when you find them, you can't kill them right away. Which is just annoying, isn't it? Steam sale, 50% off. We got two extra uh, hearts. Blue hearts. We might as well go into our curse room. It sucks real bad. Can you not stand near the explosions? Is that just not okay? So we're going to be back at full HP. And probably we can bomb our way through this way. Yeah. Well, we didn't even need to bomb our way. You get the idea. Why? <laughs> you dicks. Well, we don't really want that. We do want this, though. Joker card. Exactly what I would have hoped for. Perfect. Only one room away from being back where we were before the failure police took us away. And we're back to full HP as well. Got a scratch. My uh, nose a little bit here, which means I gotta worry about hitting myself in the face with that damage or with that uh, explosion of bullets. Obviously, that's something I'd prefer to avoid. Gotta get out of there! <laughs> we know you can't stand there at the start of the game because, at the start of the level, because you are gonna get hit. So, Joker is probably for the cathedral because I didn't get, uh, I didn't get a deal with the devil on our last floor. We will look for a second secret room. I would like a little bit more, you know, red HP. They're not gonna land over there, jeez. Okay, let's try it this way. Good enough. Don't really care about blowing up the donation machine. Yeah, we'll pick it up. We shouldn't have picked it up until just a second later, but whatever. Headless Horseman. Uh, this is extremely re-rollable. Now, what do you have? Just Krampus, huh? Uh, Lump of Coal? Head of Krampus. So Head of Krampus is going to be re-rolled. Uh, what about this? We might as well take it. Not Bob's Brain. Bob's Brain. Alright, sweet. Lord of the Pit. Ability to fly makes up for it, and then we'll re-roll this. It doesn't matter what it is. Code, tears upgrade, wire coat hanger, that's fine. Uh, we should be in a very, very good position now, even with the Bob's Brain pickup. In a way, Bob's Brain is like the least likely way for us to hurt ourselves right now. Probably more likely to just catch a, a renegade Ipecac shot from ourselves. Moon, Devil. Uh, I think the Devil card maybe beats High Priestess. Admittedly, we should have used the High Priestess at some point, but that's just uh, classic Northern Lion. 
Oftentimes you do find a secret room there. And Mystery Sack can help us out with some Spirit Art drops as well. I apologize for having a little bit of a, a muted demeanor here, but I've been really, uh, I've been anxious for like this whole run. It's been scary for me. I, uh, found myself in a position that I thought was basically going to be a guaranteed win. It turned out to not be quite as easy as I originally thought that it would be. Um, yeah, we might as well. And now I'm I'm trying to just ensure that we've we've those dangerous times in our life are past. But you know we, we're scarred by the experience that we've had in the early game here. And I don't think I'll ever feel 100% comfortable in this run until Blue Baby is like straight up literally dead. So we got some work to be done for that. And once I once I recover from that, once the healing begins, we can start to. We can start to talk about next run, you know, the streak at large, etc, etc. Might as well. One uh, black heart loss there is not a huge problem. I do hate that we lost our permanent Polaroid invincibility, but I don't think it was... I think I hit myself there. There was no way for me to do that, or to get through that without doing that. I guess is what I'm trying to say here. So starting on the Cathedral, my hope is that the game starts moving very, very quickly for us. Always something to do on this room. Room. There's also always something good going down on Mr. Sub. Sometimes I forget that these Canadianisms might not play in the larger American market. But you know, you you in the U.S. If there's there are many things that I'm actually I'm jealous of America for. Um, they're not things you'd expect. People would be like you know like American movies. Nah, man. Like we watch American movies in Canada almost exclusively. Um, which is not to say that there's no existence of Canadian film or other foreign film, etc, etc. But seriously, it's like 99% of the business is American movies, probably. Uh, well, maybe not 99, but it, it's way up there. They're dead, like, when you go to the, the movie plex, it's not like Transformers is playing on a small screen, and then it's like, um, you know, Guy Madden's My Winnipeg on the other screen. I know, some people out there are like Northern Line Clutch Guy Madden reference, man. I did my best. Um, one of the things, American food. You know, America gets kind of shit on a little bit. Don't take this as super, like, me being a brown noser either, please. Oh, I almost blew you up. But American food gets shit on a lot. People go, oh, oh stupid Americans with your cheeseburgers. And, you see, I deliberately chose just, like, a pan-European accent to offend everybody, apparently, but hopefully offend nobody. Um, Mercano we'll just use right away. But really, the U.S. has an incredibly diverse range of cuisine. You know, Northeast cuisine, you've got lovely seafood, stuff like lobster, you know, fish and chips, etc., etc., great breweries. Even Sam Adams, a major brewery in the Northeast, is great beer. Um, let's just see if we can get some extra stuff there. Uh, then you go down, you know, Florida's got the, the whole, like, uh, Cuban influence, of course, which is awesome. Texas has its own uh, cuisine culture with barbecue and stuff like that. California's got kind of like the the Mexican influence, of course, and you know California's got kind of its own cuisine as well. And then you get into the weird ass like food trucks in Oregon and and Seattle and stuff like that. And then you know you get the great Pacific Northwest salmon. It's a great culture for food. Stuff in the Midwest, you know, chop up a pineapple and then put some Miracle Whip in it and then whip it up in a bowl and serve it to people. Not necessarily my style, but you you go, you know, you do you. Now I forgot what I was going to say, but oh, really, you know what it is? Is that for my whole life, I've been seeing commercials on TV, because so much of Canada lives close to the American border, um, because it's warmer, um, that I've seen all these commercials for American fast food chains I've never eaten at. Here in Canada, we have the big ones, you know, we got Subway, McDonald's, um, we do have Arby's, Burger King, Wendy's, etc., etc. We have five guys, if you're into that. We don't really... I don't think we have any in and outs actually, now that I think about it. But five guys has made some, made some inroads. Um, but, I have never eaten at a Hardee's. I've never eaten at a Jack in the Box. I've never eaten at a Long John Silver's, which really bums me out, because people tell me it's terrible uh, quality seafood. But I'm so into that, because KFC is supposedly terrible quality chicken. I've had some great fried chicken in my life, by the way. But... Still, every once in a while, like a couple times a year, I'm like, I want some, I want a grease ball fried chicken meal for $4. And KFC fits the bill. Um, we might as well do the big room just in case. Give it a shot anyway. That was not very smart. We might as well go back for this now. Uh, and I, I love seafood, you know? I, I can get down with, with shitty seafood 
you know, I know there's a curse room there. I'm out. I'm sorry. Uh, so I would I would love some some fast food fish and chips and you know fried clam strips and shit like that But anyway, we don't have that here to the best of my knowledge I've never in my life eaten at a Sonic or a steak and shake now don't take this as me being um, You know, oh, I've led a non-privileged life or something like that because we got some good Canadian fast food chains as well Like you Americans uh, have probably never unless you've been to Canada eaten at a Harvey's Harvey's is a pretty sweet Canadian fast food chain it's just a burger place, but you can dress the burger kind of like Subway style in your own way. Um, and the, the meat quality is good, the french fries are good, and they have fantastic poutine as well. I'm trying to think of what else is Canadian specific. Mr. Sub is Canadian specific, but it's just it's just Subway. By any other name would taste as sweet. Although I think it was around... It was at least like it, it had a foothold in Canada prior to Subway. And then throughout the early 2000s, late 90s, you would just watch... All the Mr. Subs go out of business as, as Subway was like, well, and it's kind of like there's this old Mr. Show sketch where it's like a, a major supermarket moves into the territory. It's like, Fairly's, Fair. They run commercials that run against the local store. And they're like, here at Fairly's, we always have apples. And then you're like, he's like, what are you talking about? We got apples. See, well, they're just coming up. Apples are half price. But Subway was like that. They're like, We've seen you eating at Mr. Sub. Did you know Subway has more than one kind of bread? And they'd be like, okay, Mr. Sub, we gotta get on this shit ASAP. And they'd introduce like multiple kinds of bread, but by then it was too late. Because Subway had added toasting, and they're like, shit, retrofit all the stores with toasting ovens. And I know Quiznos, I think, was the progenitor of the, the whole toasting sandwiches in the fast food sense chain. Anyway, I'm just saying, you know, Mr. Sub, it's, it's still got some locations. I don't mind it, but uh, I think it, it got outcompeted pretty hard by Doctor's Associates. Goddamn scumbags. We also have uh, we also have Tim Hortons to mark great personal pride and or shame. People often ask me, oh come on. <laughs> People often ask me, Norton Line, how do you feel about Tim Hortons as a, as a Canadian? Because you know, having watched or having had millions of people watch How I Met Your Mother, like that is one of the the touchstones of Canadian culture, I suppose. It could be worse. Okay, don't fucking throw here. It could be worse, honestly. Like Tim Hortons is. I don't I don't particularly enjoy it. I don't think it's. I'm not touching this shit. I've, I've worked... I've come too close to death on this run. I don't think Tim Hortons is particularly good. I'll be that guy who uh, is unpatriotic. I do, I do prefer Starbucks, even though a lot of coffee snobs have told me that Starbucks coffee is also shitty. I just, you know, I, I just know what I like, okay? It's, uh, I'm not trying to say that I'm an objective measure of quality or anything along these lines. I don't really like Tim Hortons, but, uh, yeah, they, they are everywhere. They are extremely, extremely, uh... I'm not going to say popular, but they must be, because they're everywhere. It depends, you know. It, it's to some extent, there's a little bit of a rural, uh, urban Canadian split on the Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons-ness. I know probably, like, several Americans listening to this right now are like, We thought you were going to fillet our country, but somehow it just ended up being a dissertation of what, what's going on in Canada. When we don't care. Well, okay, I'm sorry. There are some things I'm jealous of America about. Canada is larger than America. If you count its bodies of water, at least. And I think you should, because they're contained within the country. Um, however, you can't really do as much traveling within Canada and get, like, super diverse experiences. Obviously, you know, something like Europe, where you can get on an airplane for a couple hundred pounds and fly to a, a couple hundred euros, I guess, and fly to a completely different country. That's an, an incredible uh, experience. But here in North America, it's like, in America, there's so many different, like, diverse... Oh, God. Diverse uh, cultural and regional groups that, you know, if, if you grew up your whole life in like a small town in Maryland and then you went to live in, uh, you know, the Bay Area for a couple of years, you'd have a, an interesting experience. You know, that would be that would be unusual for you. You'd be like, whoa, they do things really differently here, at least somewhat differently here. Um, in Canada, it's like, you know, Vancouver's a little different from Calgary is a little different from Toronto. Montreal and, uh, you know, the rest of Quebec, Quebec City is, is lovely in particular. Um, you know, they, they are, um, they're beautiful and different, and, you know, they, they do speak, they're bilingual, they speak predominantly French, but English and French, so that's interesting, but it's not like you can, I mean, you can go to, from, like, Texas to Minnesota. We can't really go from, like, you know, Edmonton to the tip of the Arctic Circle, which is our northern bound. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about here. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal, and, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with Win94, hopefully? Yeah.